Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall, and it's that time of year again. New year, new army. And I am here to tell you why your new army should be back again, if you do not already have one of those. Um, it is definitely my personal favorite army in lots and lots of ways, and, uh, you know, I thought uh, we could spread a little bit of grandfather's joy to everyone today. All right, so there's a few different things uh, that we're going to go through. The general gameplay of the army, uh, the uh, painting uh, side of the hobby, and uh, other hobby opportunities related uh, to this army, uh, like what you do with them. All right. Um, the, the basic message here, pretty much all of this is like, this is an army that will grow with you, uh, whether it be gameplay or painting or other hobby stuff, it's good for beginners and it goes all the way up to the most advanced in pretty much every way, right? There's stuff to be enjoyed no matter what level you're at. So for gameplay it, there's a low skill floor on this army and a high skill ceiling it's very durable it's not very complex it's like an army with good defense is generally very forgiving and it lets you make mistakes as a newer player and not be punished quite as much for it um the rules are not crazy complicated there's not all kinds of weird combos and little things to do. Um, I will say, yes, the Glotkin lists using Blightkrieg do have some nuance to them, and they're a bit more complicated than uh, some of the other army lists, but pretty much everything else in this army is pretty straightforward. Uh, it also has a decent... Uh, variety of gameplay. You can do alpha strike lists or bunker lists, um, a variety of different things. You can, you know, go heavy on demons, heavy on mortals. Um, there's, there's a variety of things to do. Um, and even though the rules are not especially complex, there's a lot of interesting abilities in the army. And and fairly straightforward uh, power pairs and combinations and things. Um, also, just in terms of collecting, the model range is not huge. So it's not really that difficult to build um, a decent collection and have a lot of variety in what you're doing. And you don't have, it's not, you know, Stormcast or Cities of Sigmar or, uh, a variety of other armies that have like a million war scrolls and it's hard to know what's even good um this is pretty simple there's a couple demon units there's a couple uh mortal units and then most of where like the variety comes from is in your heroes and monsters and that uh really makes things a lot easier from a collection standpoint and those big things are fun to work on which leads us over to the hobby opportunities for this. Um, over on the right here is just uh, some pictures that I grabbed off the internet, and you know there's going to be some others on future slides. Not my stuff. Um, I didn't pull like whose all of this actually is um, to properly give people credit, but just know this isn't mine. These are other people around the interwebs. Um, so. As far as painting and hobbying goes, there's a lot of different things you can do in this army. Lots of different materials and different types of surfaces that you can be painting, right? You have both human and non-human flesh. You know, you've got your mortals and your demons, so you can vary up different kinds of skin tone. You can even just do them all the same if you want. It is very flexible. Uh, there's lots of armor available that you can paint, although you're not necessarily, you know, in the Stormcast situation where you're painting the same armor on every single model in the 
Arnie. It's not, um, you know, the, the armor is not like super uniform across uh, all of the mortal stuff. So uh, you're not stuck with painting tons of armor if that's not quite what you dig. Um, there's lots of fabrics around, lots of the uh, heroes and uh, monsters have some amount of fabric on them. So you can have uh, some different experimentation there. Uh, there's lots of metals in the army and you can do a variety of different things with that. You know, you can go with more steel stuff or more bronze and copper and gold uh, and you can mix it up because there's a lot of different things in the army. A um, bunch of miscellaneous other little stuff, like there's some wood here and there. Um, there's a variety of different model sizes here too. Uh, we've got, you know, tiny nerdlings and your plague bearers and your demon heroes are pretty small. They're like 32 millimeter guys. Um, and then all the way up to great unclean ones and the Glotkin, which are big beefy models. They're some of the like largest surface area models in the game to paint. Um, and one of the other things that I think is interesting is that you don't need to have a consistent uh, paint scheme across the whole army. Um, if you're looking at like narrative and even just the appearance of the models, um, these guys are a little bit ragtag, so to speak, right? Like looks kind of like they're just wearing whatever armor or clothes that, you know, they were wearing when they originally fell to Nurgle. So it's not necessarily all going to be uniform armor, although you can make it that way if you want to. Um, you can do lots of variety of skin tones. Um lots of different options um you know and it'll end up looking good as long as you're kind of going with the same uh kind of scheme right like if you're going with stuff that's more muted and desaturated that's going to kind of all go together pretty well and pretty easily um so lots of different variety and opportunity um i really enjoy this particularly it makes it so you don't get bored. Um, a lot of times when you're painting an army and you get bored with what you're working on and you want to move to a different project, you kind of have to go to a different army entirely. Um, you know, all your storm cast are basically the same. So if you want uh, real variety in what you're doing, you're probably going to have to grab another army. A lot of armies are going to have um, like uniforms to their troops or consistent things like uh, Ossiarch Bone Reapers is lots and lots of bone. Um, so you don't have to be uh, married to one particular kind of thing that you're painting. You've got a bunch of different stuff. All right. Um, this army also really gives you a wide range of skill level opportunity. Um, on the left is just, you know, a fairly beginner paint job. You know, it looks like some bases, some washes, uh, some edge highlighting. Um, not really complicated, but it looks pretty good. Um, you can make it look decent without having to go too crazy with it. And then on the right, we have a, uh, I believe this is a Golden Demon finalist, uh, Sloppity Bile Piper. And, you know, he went through, picked out all kinds of crazy detail on this thing, did some freehand, um, all kinds of weird stuff. Um, the basics on this army will look good. And it also has lots and lots of potential for having really fantastic display quality models, competition quality models. And it gives you that opportunity to work on the same army. And as your skills improve, you don't have to really go that crazy with your army. Um, you have lots of room to grow within the paint schemes that you choose. Um, also, lots of opportunity to do stuff like battle damage and weathering and all that stuff. And when you're earlier on in painting as well, you can kind of use that to cover up some of your imperfections and can really kind of draw attention away from that or 
you know, it just kind of cover it up entirely. So it gives you good opportunity to have a nice looking army on the table and you don't have to go and, and feel like you're an expert level painter to have it look decent. Um, also, these models generally take contrast really well. There's a lot of texture in most of the surfaces, so you're not uh, having to deal with those big open flat areas that contrast doesn't really do well on. Uh, and the same if you want to use the old like base wash dry brush technique, that also looks really good on a lot of these guys. So it gives you opportunity. And yeah, you know, I remember painting my first Great Unclean one. I think it was actually the first Magikin model I ever painted. And it really was basically base wash dry brush. And um, then from there, picking out details and all of that stuff. And as I've grown, I've gone back to those early models and, you know, emphasized the recesses a little bit more and added some different uh, kinds of color contrast to make things look uh, more organic and just generally look um, better, more interesting. So, yeah, repainting is something that I personally do a lot and going back and even not necessarily repainting, but kind of touching things up, making things look a little bit better. All right. Conversions. Um, there is an insane amount of conversion opportunity with this army, and it can begin as simple things like head and weapon swaps. And as you go, you can do some truly crazy things because this army is uh, filled with things that are gross and weird and mutated. And because of that, too, if your conversion isn't perfect, it's kind of okay. You can kind of make up for that in the paint job pretty easily just because it Nurgle stuff is supposed to look weird and derpy to a certain point. Um, as long as you kind of get to like good enough, it can be good enough. Um, and then if you want to go crazy, you can do some really awesome things too. Just, you know, like, up here on the screen, this like Cthulhu looking uh, Glotkin or, uh, you know, going nuts with, you know, converting like a fallen Stormcast army where, uh, you know, you swap out their weapons and do uh, all kinds of battle damage and stuff like that and head swaps. You know, the, the possibilities with this are really pretty limitless. Um, there are tons and tons and tons of extra bits, particularly in uh, the mortal kits. Um, you know, your Magath Lords come with three different rider options and a whole bunch of different pieces, so you can easily grab those. Um, I mean, made like a weird Nurgle Chaos spawn out of some pieces from that. And, um, you know, and like the two extra riders that you'll have that you're not going to use, like they go really easy to throw extra like different bodies on top of your Pusquil Blight Lords, your Blight Lords and your Blight Kings both have a, an insane number of extra bits that you can use to swap around and it looks good. Um, you know, you can just grab heads, shields, whatever. Um, I used spare bits to just convert a whole Slaves to Darkness army to be Nurgle. And, you know, every single model in the army is converted and almost entirely just with bits from my Maggot King collection. Just the extra crap that I have. Um, and there's always, like, lots of different options and everything. There's, you know, a lot of your banner bearers, for example, will have, like, a couple of different options um just tons and tons of bits available um good here too to learn sculpting uh that's something that i'm definitely working on a bit over time it's a big challenge it's different um but again you can start off with simple things like filling gaps in your conversions uh and smoothing things out to you know, move towards more and more complex things. 
There's also out there a ton of third party models that can work really well with this. And even just grabbing things out of like 40K, for example, uh, since you know, Death Guard are really just, you know, Nurgle Space Marines. Uh, if you wanted to, you could probably take Death Guard troops and head swap them all to be, uh, you know, without helmets so they don't look super spacey, take their backpacks off or whatever and weapon swap them. And there you go, bam. Uh, interesting looking Nurgle army that's, you know, using un unorthodox models. All right, so that is about it, guys. I um, hope I've made my case for you uh, heading down the path to the grandfather with your new army. Uh, I'm sorry, new year, new army project. Um, it is going to be uh, a lot of fun if you decide down this road there's a great community of nurgle players out there that are always happy to help um it's just it's a fun army there's tons of opportunity there's tons of variety and you can just get creative and do what you want you don't have to feel married to anything in particular all right well that's it for now guys i'll talk to you all later